All right, guys, I'm going to try to make a speed density or fueling uh, AFR error graph really quickly because it seems like all these other videos are 20, 30 minutes long. <coughs> Let's get going. First things we're going to need to make sure we have is, uh, and this is going to be for Gen 4, you know, Silverado, E38 ECUs, your Camaro, Silverado, so on, you know, Silverado's 07 to 2013. So for this, we're going to need to be reading in our channels over here. We want our RPM. You can use SAE generic. We want our intake manifold absolute pressure, i.e. our map sensor being read. Now you're going to click this once you have it in your channels. You're going to go to units and make sure you're in kilopascal, KPA. If it's not in kilopascal, you are not going to get the right readings. I want to take a moment to also remind you, you have to have a wideband set up to do this. I'll do another video on that. Uh, the AEMs are fucking stupid easy to wire in. You don't even have to load more drivers. Literally, if you get the serial plugs, which are in another video I've made, you can plug them into your second USB port. It automatically reads provided. You are also reading your air fuel ratio commanded and your actual um, displayed AFR, red AFR. Now, I did not, because I use a serial cable, I did not use the preset um, AFR readings in HP tuners that they, that they have for AEM. I actually go to serial and then uh, under serial is another AEM option. And I'll show you how to do that. So here we go. We're going to go in. We're going to say add a channel. We will come up here. And then um, it won't let me add it because I already have it on my list. But it's the same process. And you'll just double click. Go all the way down to external inputs. Do not click the AEM. Do not. Click serial port is what we want. There's another AEM. Now, you'll click that. You have an EQ ratio and AFR. Whichever one you're using to tune is what you will use. I use AFR. I don't care that you guys use Lambda. That's fine. I'm sure it's more precise. AFR works for me. It's easier for me to read and I can watch it while I'm driving. So if I was going to choose AFR, I would hover over like so and I would double click AM AFR under serial port. And it'll automatically add it to your channel list as seen right there. Okay, now... Once those things are being read, manifold absolute pressure in kilopascal, RPM, AFR. I'm going to come over here. You're going to right click, go to graph layout. You're going to add a graph. Yep, add table. And there's our new table and our parameters, okay? So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go in and use... Um, our AFR maths, so you're going to go down to math, maths, you're not using anything from external inputs, any of that, you go to math, lambda AFR, I am using AFRs, so I would use my AFR error ratio, if you're doing lambda, you'd use your EQ ratio error, okay, I'm going to do this, so I'll double click that, make sure it's in percentage, Add your decimal like goat rope does. Cell hits required to get good data, let's say 10. You can put it at five, but it's gonna fill a lot more data that way quicker. Uh, I would start with 10. I mean, with VVE, you might even wanna start with five because it seems like the more it fills, the easier it is to, to do the, um, oh my God, the fucking, the, the math, the coefficient calculations. Here, I wanna go with a high of five. We're gonna put that color to, we'll just do like goat rope. We'll go green, okay? Low of negative five, minus five. We will go red, oh, I didn't put, so we'll go red, okay? And so, it'll. if it's rich, it's gonna read red, meaning it wants to take fuel away. Uh, green for that. If it reads green or high, then it needs to add fuel. So you would have a lean reading on your AFR needing to add fuel. Now, down here, your column axis is going to be your engine speed. 
as long as everything matches, you can come up here, go RPM, you'll find that. RPM SAE is fine. Double click that. Yep, use the generic. That sounds great. Bam, you've got that there. I want you to come over to your tune just to be safe. Go, uh, go to your virtual volumetric efficiency, which is, um, I don't know how much you guys know, but your VVE is under the edit tab. Go to virtual volumetric efficiency. Right click this empty box in the upper left corner and it will give you a column axis. That is your RPMs. Copy labels, that's very easy. We'll go back to our scanner. Under here, just simply paste where it says values. Bam, now we've got all of our values set up. I know it says 4,000 up, but if you were to click it and you know, arrow over, you'll see that it goes down to eight or 600 or whatever, five, 400. Now for our row axis, what we wanna use is our map sensor KPA. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna go manifold, fold absolute. You can use that pressure. Uh, I believe I used high res, but I don't know. It don't matter. Use this one. More generic. Yes, use the generic thing. Now you've got kilopascal. Make sure it's set to kilopascal in this box. Sorry, my camera sucks. Now you're going to come back over to your tune in VCM editor on the virtual volumetric efficiency. Right click that white little box in the top left corner of the map. Go to your row axis. Copy labels is what we want. Click that. Now all these labels, all these numbers have been copied, all these, these map pressure readings. Go back to your tune file, or to your, your scanner, go to your values, click it, right click, simply paste, <clears throat> and my boy, you have a very efficient AFR error graph right now. And this is literally a copy and paste uh, by percentage half on your map once you've filled a lot of your cells and data. Um, I really don't want this to save, but it's going to, so we'll just click out of it. Now I have fucking two, wonderful. I'm gonna delete this one, if I can. I'll have to go to grass. I'll do that later. But let me kind of give you guys, uh, we're at seven minutes. Let's, uh, let's get ready to wrap this up. But if I was gonna use this data that I've logged, what I would do is I would right click in the upper left corner, or no, I would left click to highlight it all. And then I would simply do this, copy with axis. That's a key here, copy with axis. That gets the whole mapping copied, rather than one line or whatever. I would say copy with axis, and then I would go to my tune. I would go to this upper left corner in the blank box, right click, and paste special, not paste, but paste special, Come over here and go multiply the percentage or multiply by percentage half. Now you would click that and I'm going to show you and undo it. When I click that, you'll notice the cells that I had logged, these are all going to change. Bam. Now when I show you in this, it looks like shit. See how it made it really rocky? But when you click this calculate coefficients, it's going to blend all that together. That's what that does. I'm not going to do it because I believe I've already put that information in so let me undo it there we go and that's how you do it that's how you get your afr graph and then you go i would say it's easiest to tune these in sections right uh, and i'm going to wrap this up at 10 minutes exactly it's easiest to tune these in sections so i like to go from my idle up to about 3000 and i'll cruise in that range in, in third gear second gear if i'm on the highway fourth gear so i'm able to bounce between these ranges and i try to paint as many of these cells as i can i want them red or green in my log i don't give a fuck what they are i let the computer figure that out right because that's what we're doing finding the errors between targeted AFR and what we actually have. So you wanna paint all these while you drive. Take your time, go up a lot of hills, roll into the throttle slow, let off slow, get into vacuum, get up into you know, higher manifold pressures, all that shit. 
and then do the copy paste thing. But you wanna you wanna paint as many of these as you can while you're logging. If it takes you 30 minutes to drive and paint a good portion, perfect. Fucking do it. Now I find it's easier to do it up to 3,000 and then or 2,800, and then I like to go from 3,000. And I'll get on the highway and say third or fourth gear where I can really open it up and cruise and get up to high RPMs while cruising. And I will cruise in that range, fourth gear, whatever, at high revs over 3,000 RPM. Make sure you take care of your engines, got good oil, everything's in shape. And I'll paint in all these cells up here that I can. You can see I've done a good little chunk here and some up there. And I even did a pull that affected some down here, down in this range. And I do that, and once I've got that up to about 5,000 RPM, I will go back, and I will find a very steep hill which replicates a full load like on a dyno, and I will roll into the throttle slowly. I mean, roll, get in second where it's not going to downshift on a steep hill or fourth or whatever, and roll into your throttle that, like this with your foot. I mean, slow until it's revving out. And I don't like to let it drop into vacuum on SD tuning. It just seems to skew the numbers with that coefficient shit. So before I let off my gas, when I'm getting towards red line, um, I will click to shift up in the gear hold mo mode or shift up three or four times so it can pop into fifth or sixth. And I don't get that lean D cell spike that just fucks up the information when we're tuning. We can work with that shit later, but we want to get the drivability right. So roll in up a steep hill for these are for wide open poles you're gonna end up at 6,000 rpm but you want to roll in from a thousand all the way up or as low as you can 1500 whatever and just slowly and you want it to try to paint as many of these cells as it increases in load and rpm and then you can go back and put those in Tuning over fucking 4,000 or so is really difficult because you're never at five grand just cruising up and down. And it, I mean, it's not fun to cruise like that. It's kind of obnoxious and it's, it's scary. All right, this video has gone on too long. You know how to make a math error graph. Goat Rope Garage, you know, you've been a great help along the way. Thank you for that, my dude. Uh, not trying to step on your toes, but everybody's videos are so fucking long. And hell, even this is long because I'm a babbler. I hope this helps you guys out. Uh, check out my other video on how to wire the signal cable to your nine bin or your nine pin uh, serial cable on your AEM wideband. Whether it's a UEGO or UEGOX, it's going to be the blue cable. You'll see. Check my other video. Take care.